bag of nails is on the line. Cincinnati versus Louisville. Bearcat quarterback Munchie Lego trying to bounce back from Cincinnati's first loss of the season. While Teddy Bridgewater and Louisville still undefeated. It's late October, so bundle up. Bearcats versus Cards for the Keg of Nails. You're watching College Football Primetime. In Louisville, Kentucky, in the Big East, three teams still undefeated in conference play, even after Cincinnati's loss last week against the Toledo Rockets. Rutgers, Louisville, and Cincinnati still undefeated in league play. Rutgers and Louisville still undefeated on the year. And welcome to Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Carter Blackburn with Rod Gilmore. Jamel Hill joins us in a moment. Rod, there's a lot of talk about the future of the Big East and the changes and the changes to college football postseason. Here's what we know about 2012. There is a BCS berth from the Big East Conference, which makes this a very critical game. Yeah, this, this conference is not a part of the national championship discussion. That's clear. We know that. Not any love for the Big East, but having an automatic bid is huge. This year and next year and these teams are vying for that right now and one of the reasons Louisville is vying for that BCS spot the play of their sophomore quarterback Teddy Bridgewater who has emerged into a very good one in a hurry yeah I, I really like him you're, you're not going to be wowed by the statistics he's not going to throw for a gazillion yards but the subtle things about quarterback play he does it he does it well it's almost Andrew Luck esque the way he comes about it Preci precision passing accuracy the pocket presence, the critical throws on third down in the red zone, and just all the little things that you need to win at this level and the next level, that's what he does. High praise for Teddy Bridgewater. Cincinnati has another good quarterback, Munchie Lego. The question is, Rod, is he better than Teddy Bridgewater? <laughs> well, he's got the best name in college football, but better than Teddy Bridgewater? Right now, I don't think so. But. He said that he's better, and he said that he will prove it tonight. And all he has to do is play better, but he's put a target on his back. Now, he's a very talented player, but he hasn't played with a lot of accuracy in his passing. He'll need that tonight. Well, the Bearcats have backed up the talk the last four years. They have won the last four keg of nails games. So the cards, angry, ready to take the... Adrian Bouchelle from the end zone brings it out. Bouchelle across the 20. There's a flag down as Bouchelle gets to the 28. Brought down by Buckley. That's a holding against Louisville. So we'll see the Louisville offense first in Teddy Bridgewater. The saga of how Teddy Bridgewater became a Cardinal is a journey through some recent history in college football. He's from Miami, committed to the Hurricanes, but Randy Shannon fired. So then he committed to LSU, but the Tigers went out and recruited Zach Mettenberger. Mm -hmm. So Charlie Strong offered Bridgewater the chance to be a quarterback. He settled on the Cardinals, and he is thriving here in Louisville. If he were playing for LSU right now, I think they'd be undefeated and a little bit higher rated. Many, I think he's that good. How many LSU fans do you think hoping that Teddy Bridgewater was a Tiger rather than a Cardinal? BCS implications all around. Jeremy Wright, first down handoff, and nothing doing for the first Louisville running back, Devin Drain. It's three. Let's look at the Cardinal impact players. Well, it's really, in this weather, you start thinking about the running attack. Sonoris Perry, Jeremy Wright. Perry is a big-time explosive re running back. Wright great on third down, and defensively, Hakeem Smith just saves everything, wipes out big plays back there at that safety spot. Louisville Cardinals 7-0 one last week against South Florida. Had to stave off a tough one at home. That one's incomplete, so quickly third down for Louisville on the opening drive for the Cardinals. Yeah, you know, we talked about... Teddy Bridgewater and what he does at quarterback and one of the big things and one of the reasons I compare him to Andrew Luck is his ability to keep you out of negative plays to keep you on time so you aren't second and 14 second and 16 that sort of thing he avoids the, the plays that put you in a bad spot he's pretty good on third and seven that is extremely high praise for a sophomore 19 year old quarterback Teddy Bridgewater sophomore from Miami Northwestern High School Pressured on third and seven. Bridgewater releases and it's dropped. 
by Devontae Parker, what would have been a first down. Yeah, he was right on the money. You know, you start wondering about the weather. Typically, rain like this doesn't bother receivers too much, particularly with gloves on, but he short arms out when Parker does and loses it. Usually, it's wind that bothers a passing attack, not, not rain. The wind is usually the biggest issue. Charlie Strong pointed out to Jamel before the game that Louisville has played in rainy conditions a lot this season, including a deluge in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Short punt for Louisville from Ryan Johnson. So Cincinnati will have it in Louisville territory on the first drive for the Bearcats. Just a 34-yard punt from Ryan Johnson. Benton Shannon Lego from New Orleans. When he was a little boy, he lost his two middle teeth. His grandmother got a big kick of how he munched on his meals without those teeth. So Benton <laughs> has forever been Munchy Lego. Yeah, yeah, the Lego. Lego, the Munchy Lego. Remember the Virginia Tech, big touchdown pass to win that ball game. Best name in college football. Through a couple of critical interceptions last week in the loss to Toledo, including one return for a touchdown. Lego hands off George Wynn on first down, picks up about eight right through the middle of the Cincinnati defense. And he runs an offense that is an up-tempo spread offense. You'll see a lot of that zone read that's been popular the last several years, and they'll go as fast as possible. They want to run as many plays as they can during the game, somewhere around 75 to 80 if they can get it in. Win through the Louisville defense for eight. Cincinnati already inside the Cardinal 40. Win again. Stood up and win is driven back with Preston Brown, the middle linebacker, leading the way. This offense, Carter, 35 points a game, 225 yards a game. Both of those are tops in the Big East. A rushing yards, 226, best in the Big East, 16th in the nation. Third down and one on the opening Cincinnati drive. With three seconds, Wynn gets it on third and one and moves the chains inside the Cardinal 35. And the challenge for the Cardinals will be dealing with this rushing attack and committing their safeties to attacking the line of scrimmage. Run blitzes, in other words. And that means that they'll have to hold up on the outside in single coverage. First three plays from scrimmage all went to George Wynn. Off a of play action, Lego rolling. Lego throws and it's nearly picked. It's incomplete. That's the corner, Adrian Bouchel, the lone senior starter on the defense for Louisville. You know, Munchy Lego is talented, has a tremendous arm. He's six foot five, he sees well, but the accuracy has been a bit of an issue this year. Overall, about 53%. And then when you back out his games against the FCS opponents, he's under 50%. Can we talk about 47% here? Keeps coming up this fall. They go on second and 10. Michelle shows pressure off the corner. Instead, it's win right up the middle. And there's Preston Brown in the middle. And speaking of those numbers, Rod. Yeah, if we talk about 47%, I mean, we're talking about his four games against the FBS or bowl division schools and 47 percent doesn't get it done in any offense you you've got to be well north of that to be effective and that's his challenge tonight third and seven for Cincinnati from the Louisville 30. Lego over the middle, it's incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Kelsey, and Jermaine Reeve, the true freshman, another Miami Northwest high school guy back there in coverage. Yeah, he's throwing into a five defensive back look, a nickel package, and when it's third and long, that's a challenge. This will be Miliano from 47. Tony Miliano 
who's long is 46. Miliano's 47 yarder is good. 47 yard field goal and Cincinnati takes a three nothing lead. The wind died down prior to the kick from Miliano. He boots it through. And yeah, the, the script, he'll script his first dozen or 15 plays or so, all while the old 49ers. Sean Watson teaches the defense first to his offensive players. How to read defense is beginning with checking that free safety. Bridgewater rolling on first and ten, and he will take the sack. Greg Blair will be credited with that sack and a loss for Teddy Bridgewater. But Roddy, he, he didn't try to force it downfield. No. He didn't. One of the rare, one of the few negative plays for Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, and getting back to, to teaching that defense, I think that's a great thing. You see him coming out right now to grab something, but he'll head back out there. Teaching the defense first before you get the playbook. And that's great for a quarterback. He must understand the coverages he's seeing and the fronts that he's facing before he gets to learn the playbook. That's wonderful. Louisville goes out of the eye. One tight end on the near side. Flag down. And Blair makes the tackle on Jeremy Wright. Illegal formation, offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, second down. So it's second and long after that illegal formation. And correction, now the penalty declined by Cincinnati, so it's third down, third and 12 for Teddy Bridgewater after a three and out on the opening drive and now third and 12. You know, last week against South Florida, he was 8 of 8 on throws of 15 yards or longer. I mean, that, that's efficient in, in tough situations. And here's the third and long. It's third down and seven. My mistake earlier, it's third down and seven now for Louisville. Bridgewater drops, throws, completes. Another long throw, it's complete. And Louisville and the Cardinals convert on third and seven. Parker makes the grab. You know, we talk about quarterback play and being efficient and managing the situation. This is what Kenny Bridgewater has done in third down situations. In third and long, he's done well. 34 situations, 59% on third and long situations. Play action on first down, Bridgewater down, field complete inside the 30-yard line, inside the 10. Knocked out at the five. Andrew Smith, the senior with a 50-yard play. That's the decoy on the other side of that play, and they came back to the other side to get Andre Smith. So first and goal, Louisville from the five. Bridgewater under center. He hands to Wright. Wright is written down at the one. Jordan Stepp, second and goal for the Cardinals. So Louisville converts on third and seven to keep the drive alive and then the big one. Let's go back to that play. You'll see Andre Smith get out behind the press coverage and beat that and beat the safety. And Teddy Bridgewater waits for him to clear. Well done. He was looking off everyone to the other side before coming, coming back to Andre Smith. Louisville has been excellent in the red zone. 80% touchdown. On second and goal. Touchdown Cardinals right into the end zone. Bridgewater gets a couple of huge completions and Wright finishes it off. Louisville takes the lead. Six plays into the end zone. John Wallace, PAT, is good. And Louisville has a 7-3 lead. 
on Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the accuracy of Teddy Bridgewater, and he had it on this long play that got this Andrell Smith clearing the safety, perfectly dropped in, and that gives you the situation where the Cardinals go ahead, 7-3. Here's the pressure on third and eight. Lego delivers, and it's complete. There's Julian working against the corner. Terrell Floyd on third and long. Yeah, he got good protection. There was a blitz coming. They picked it up. Munchy Lego stood in there and found Floyd. Floyd covering his guy to the outside. He works on him and gets the ball out to Julian, working against Floyd in one of the extra corners. From inside the Louisville 15. Play fake. That is incomplete. Intended for Tompkins on the screen. Second and 10. He showed you Louisville's 80% touchdowns. Cincinnati, 59% touchdowns when they get inside the opponent's 20. And you know it by now. What do you want in the red zone? We want 75 to 80 percent. Yep, uh, yep, that's what you could do. Oh, thank you very much. The only that's... thing you haven't done correctly has been all over the Remember the Titans. Football is fun, sir. <laughs> you brushed up a little you bit. You and Jamel uh, successfully uh, busted me on that so much. I had to go and do it. We have the Wildcat quarterback, Jordan Lou Allen, in for second and ten for the Cats. He tosses to Abernathy. Abernathy going the other way. Abernathy turns on the Jets, dives, and he is in for a touchdown. Abernathy was bottled up in the backfield, but Ralph David Abernathy, the fourth, has a 14-yard touchdown run, and Cincinnati's on top. Oh, he made that by himself. Wow. And watch all the white shirts that are not fooled. Look at everybody who's there to make the play. He manages to stutter step, stop them. 93 Roy Phylon wasn't able to make the play, and he got to the edge and got to the end zone. Wow. BAT is good. It's 10 7 Cincinnati. Abernathy was bottled up, and then he just smashed the bottle. Uh, this is an outstanding piece of running. Gets Cincinnati right back in the ball game. Rule two, section 11. To fumble the ball is to lose player possession. To muff the ball is to make an unsuccessful attempt to catch or recover a ball that is touched in the attempt. Yeah, it, it, that's the right call. And you see Charlie Strong was never happy about it and said something to one of the officials, and that got him the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, cost him another 15 yards. He basically got teed. Yeah. But it was the right call on the field, and we started talking about it right off the bat that it was a muff. That's a muff, not a fumble, therefore a touchback rather than a safety. And then because of the 15-yard penalty on the Louisville bench, yeah. 15 more yards, and Cincinnati has it at the 35. Yeah, he, he just would never accept that. He must have believed that the ball was caught and fumbled, but it was never possessed. He dropped the ball while tra trying to catch it, so it has to be a, a fumble. A muff, I'm sorry, a muff. And the referee, Dennis Hennigan, was all over it in the explanation. The officiating crew got together, verified it was a muff rather than a fumble, and we check in with... Jamal. Carter, you're exactly right when you said it's like a technical. You know how basketball coaches do it, and sometimes it hypes up their team. That's exactly what happened down on the sideline. It sent a current through all these players. They have, they're have inciting the crowd. Uh, they, that really stirred them up. It is louder. And the Louisville Cardinals are wearing all white, a.k.a. Rick Pitino. Attitude reflect leadership. Third and three. Releases, it's incomplete. Preston Brown puts the pressure on Munchie Leo. And after the month. Yeah, Preston Brown working on the left side of that line. Got in there to wreak a little havoc and Munchie Lego is limping a little bit. 
but he's going to come from over here. They're going to set this up for him. They do a little stunt. They free him up. He comes inside. He gets there to make a little bit of a hit. And you weren't even on top of the remember the Titans rush. I know, I know. I get... Leadership. Come on now. Sunshine. Since you're watching, Sunshine. <laughs> O'Donnell's punt. It's going to bounce inside the 25, inside the 20. Dominguez lets it roll all the way back down to the 11. So after the muff and after the flag on Charlie Strong, the Louisville defense gets a three and out. Munchie Lego and the Bearcats give the football back, taking the blow from the Cardinals. Bearcats still lead by three. Second and 12, here's Bridgewater. Batted an interception. Intercepted by Malik Bomar. Bomar picks off Teddy Bridgewater, just the fourth interception thrown this year by Bridgewater. Uh, Momar did a great job. Mo Bomar just sliding over, happened to get his hand on it. Watch him, he's to the right of the screen. He actually sees it, gets his hand on it, and Bomar does a great job of taking care of that. Reads the quarterback's eyes perfectly, tips it, and makes the play himself. Which sets Cincinnati up already inside the Louisville 20-yard line. So Munchie Lego, who's thrown two interceptions from the shotgun with Ralph David Abernathy, the fourth, next to him in the backfield. Off the fake. Lego scrambling, finds the outside, and he is near the first down, near the 10-yard line. We'll see where they mark him out. Smart move. He was trying to get Abernathy on a wheel route towards the end zone, saw it wasn't there, and took off. That was a great decision. Call it second down and two now. So an eight yard run from Lego. Abernathy inside the 10. First and goal, Cincinnati. Keith Brown there on the stop. You want Keith Brown leading the car. This is what we see. Cincinnati 59% touchdown in the red zone this season. One for one tonight. Yeah, 59 is not good enough. One for one is good. Two for two would be better for Cincinnati. Abernathy on first and goal. Bottled up, gets to the five anyway, so a gain of two before Calvin Pryor brings him down. It's second and goal from the five. Let's go back and take a look at this. This is an unbalanced line. This is a tight end right here, and here's a guard, and now you have all these linemen here. So they've got heavy blocking here, and they run the play there. Now, when you have that tight end set to that side over there, the defense sets the strength of its defense to the tight end, and they're undermanned against that unbalanced line. Left side? Yeah, left, strong side. Thank you. <laughs> Second and goal from the four now. Lego keeps it and munchies into the end zone. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Off the interception. Munchie Lego and the Bearcats add to the lead. Don't forget, that was set up by the other number four, Bomar, with the great defensive play. Bomar gets the pick. Munchie Lego into the end zone. Cincinnati has a 16 to 7 lead. A short field, but like the Cincinnati fight song says, the red and black shall triumph. Struggling down the field. A short field and Munchie Lego gets him into the end zone. 17 to 7. Head in our coverage. Bridgewater under center. Jeremy Wright is the back.
Bridgewater keeps. Teddy Bridgewater appears to have the first down. First and 10, Louisville from the Cincinnati 25. How about Teddy Bridgewater coming up to the line of scrimmage and giving the signals a la Peyton Manning like he had something going on. Clearly was a dummy signal at that point, had to be. And that's one of the things that the offensive coordinator, Sean Watson, and Charlie Strong talk about, the maturity of Teddy Bridge. This is a 19-year-old sophomore quarterback who gives dummy signals to confuse defenses and does it very well, sometimes confusing the Louisville defense when they play in scrimmages. There's Mom looking for a touchdown. Bridgewater to the end zone. It is batted, and it is incomplete. Incomplete. Drain comes away with the football, but it's incomplete. The pass intended for Charles Gaines. Well, did, it, did it hit the ground? The drain came up with it, and, and Teddy's a little bit late with this ball. He had him open, and then it's short, and it does hit the ground. I mean, Drain got close with his hands, but you'll see the ball is not protected. He's using the ball as it hits the ground. Good call by the officials down there. But that ball was late. Should have been thrown earlier. Second down, this is Perry. Sonoris Perry is wrestled down right around the 21-yard line. Wuhan makes the stop. Let's go back to that play in the end zone. From this angle, it looks as though Drain might have caught it. But that angle, I thought the angle from the end zone showed the bottom of the football actually touching the ground and his hands were not underneath the ball. Well, the back judge was right there, yeah. said the ball hit the ground, it's incomplete. Now it's in the book. Yeah, I think that was the right call. 12th play of the drive, third and six for Bridgewater. Bearcats show pressure from Blair up the middle. Now he backs off. Bridgewater fires complete. It's Smith who makes the grab. Inside the 10, first and goal, Cardinals. That was another third and long that Bridgewater converted. And this ball comes out quickly on time. Three-step gets rid of it. Picks up the first down. First and goal from the eight for the Cardinals. Harry is the back. And down this line again. Harry runs right, bounces outside and into the end zone. Louisville caps the drive with a touchdown. A 13 play, 80 yard drive. Ends with Sonoris Perry into the end zone. Did you see the last second shift from the left side to the right side by one of the linemen? That gave them the unbalanced line, just the tight end and the guard on the left side of the center, and a lot of blockers, a lot of linemen to the right side. BAT wobbles in there, three point game. It is the late shift. Watch that shift over here. That's going to create it for the unbalanced line. And a nice job by Perry getting in there, right on that right side. They're back in the ball. Eight one. Less than 10 seconds. Bridgewater checks it down again. That's Sonoris Perry. Perry to the 45. Clock stops temporarily with the moving of the chains. Louisville. We'll take another timeout. So playing it all the way to the end, three seconds. Louisville will have it at the 45 yard line and time for one shot. That's Lorenzo Malden who is uh, leaving, waving, throwing the L to the Louisville fans. Malden the defensive end went off on the last series for the Louisville Cardinals, the sophomore from Atlanta. Well, Charlie Strong playing it to the end here at the half. One timeout remaining for Louisville, three seconds, but he takes that timeout rather than taking a knee or just uh, going into the uh, going into the locker room down by three. He wants to take one last shot before the half. Yeah, that's about all you get. You hope for maybe pass interference, or maybe you can get it to the end zone and get a get an actual shot at something here. But this is your last play, barring a penalty. 
Bridgewater rolling with zeros on the clock. He heaves it downfield. Bridgewater throws it all the way to the back of the end zone. There is a flag down. The pass was incomplete, but a flag down. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 94, 15 yard penalty, first down. And that's why you play it to the end of the half. Yeah, that's Jordan's step with the hit late here. That gets the flag, but that's not going to be enough. The 15-yarder won't give you a field goal attempt here. So it's just one more shot. This one from yeah. the 40. You saw uh, on that uh, last play. Hey, hang on. They're actually going to try this. This is going to be almost a 60-yard. It'll be a 57-yard kick. If, in fact, Louisville goes for it, timeout Cincinnati. John Wallace, the redshirt freshman, the longest in his brief Louisville career, is 43. That was versus North Carolina. Well, at least you tell them there's no pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, end of the half, take a, take a swipe at it. We got nothing to lose. Good practice for you. If you make it, great. If you miss it, so what? Wallace is five for five field goal kicking on the year. He has had two PATs blocked, including one in the fourth quarter versus South Florida last week. The long 43. The one thing you have to be concerned about if you're Louisville is that in an attempt to get more behind this, the kick's a little bit low. And if it's a little low, there's the risk of the block, and you don't want that because it can go the other way. And the rain begins to fall again before the 57-yard attempt for well, Cincinnati isn't buying it. They are, they are not even rushing this kick. Wallace 57-yard attempt is no good. Now he is fielded it. at the back of the end zone and an attempt at a run back. This is Tompkins who brings it back to the 25. Tompkins is wrestled down. So playing it all the way to the end of the half and beyond Cincinnati 17, Louisville 14. Four of 15 passing for Lego. 9 of 22 with a few drops for Teddy Bridgewater. Both of them have to pick it up in the second half for their respective teams. Louisville kicks off to begin the second half. So Cincinnati football from inside the five-yard line. This is Ralph David Abernathy, the fourth. And Abernathy, the sophomore from Atlanta, gets across the 25. We check in with Jamel Hill. Guys, I asked uh, Coach Butch Jones what they can do, what Cincinnati can do to regain some of the momentum here in the second half. He pointed out one thing. They have to get off the field on third down. You guys, of course, have noted Ted, Teddy Bridgewater's efficiency. He knows that's the key to this game is stopping Louisville on third down going forward. Munchie Lego, the Cincinnati quarterback, told the Cincinnati Enquirer earlier this week, I'm better than Teddy Bridgewater, and we'll find out on Friday night. Both have had their struggles, but it's Lego and the Bearcats with a three-point lead to begin the second half. Bouchelle shows corner blitz. Here comes Bouchelle. Lego throws that direction, and it's a two-yard gain. Brown makes the stop on Kelsey. A Munchie Lego is really athletic, really talented. His accuracy can fluctuate from time to time. Sometimes he throws it high. Usually here is the one that gave me the umbrella. Oh, okay, yeah. I think he thought he needed it. Win gets maybe a yard on second down. So third and long already for the Cincinnati Bearcats on the opening drive of the second half. This is Mick Cronin, bottom right, the Cincinnati basketball coach. How about the area code up top? 513 for Cincinnati. And seven on the dice. You think? You don't know what that means. <laughs> Lego slips away from the pressure and scrambles for a Cincinnati first down to the 40. Uh, he reads this pretty quickly and is very decisive. Once he recognizes the pressure and he creates a lane for himself, he's out of there. That's a good job picking up the first down, keeping the drive alive. They rushed for 132 versus Pitt in the opening win. Four carries for 36 yards tonight, and the touchdown for Lego.
screen on first down. That's Abernathy trying to slip away, but Adrian Bouchel there to tackle the slippery Ralph David Abernathy the fourth. I think he needs more touches. You know, it seems to me that when he's had the football, he's made good things happen, and they just haven't had enough touches by him tonight. Seven carries, only one reception. That was his first reception on that screen for the sophomores, averaging almost seven yards a carry. Win on second and five. On the read option, Wynn takes it as the first down as Preston Brown misses the tackle, allowing Wynn to cross the 50. Powerful run by George Wynn. Watch him deliver the blow at the end of this. Lower the shoulder and bam, he just really takes on Brown. Hurrying on first and 10, Wynn takes it again, only picks up a couple here. Wynn, the senior from Southfield, Michigan. He's taken the bulk of the Cincinnati carries this year after Isaiah Pede, a terrific offensive player, 2011 Big East Conference Player of the Year, MVP of the Senior Bowl. Wynn gets it again on second down. We'll have third down and about four. Preston Brown there on the stop. Is it Isaiah Pede, a second round pick of yes. the Rams and playing for them now? Here's a third down. You know, the pace has picked up for Cincinnati, but now they go to a substitution, and it allows Louisville to substitute as well. Third down and four. Opening drive of the second half of the Bearcats. Heavy pressure. Picked up by Cincinnati. Legos pass is incomplete, but pass interference coming. Stephon Robinson tangled up with Alex Chisholm. Well, Robinson's going to complain that the ball is not catchable. Pass interference, defense number 12. 15-yard penalty, first down. And the ball was thrown over the receiver's head. But the way it's interpreted, the officials assume that a receiver can make a fantastic catch. And if Robinson doesn't interfere with him, Chisholm has an opportunity to catch that football. Well, and the other thing is that Robinson does not see the ball, does not play the ball. If he's playing the ball, maybe he gets away with it. But you're not going to have an uncatchable ball call unless the ball is thrown way out of bounds. Cincinnati from the Louisville 25. Lego throwing complete inside the 10. That's the tight end, Kelsey. Nice. First and goal, Cincinnati. Nice throw. Seam route, quickly read it, quickly delivered the football as they rushed to the line of scrimmage. Cincinnati hurries up for first and goal from the six. Wynn keeps it, takes it to the four. Durant brings him down, second and goal from inside the five. <laughs> A little hands on the hips, a little winded on this drive, perhaps. Some of the Louisville defensive players. Tenth play of the drive coming for Cincinnati. Abernathy in the backfield with Munchie Lego. Abernathy, touchdown, Cincinnati. An opening drive, touchdown out of the half, and the Bearcats take command again. Yeah, good luck trying to see him in the backfield. You call for more touches, Rod. He's into the end zone for the second time for Ralph David Abernathy. Munchy Lego on the drive, three for three, 46 yards. Abernathy finishes it off with a touchdown. Yeah, Abernathy is an explosive player. Miliano's PAT is good. A 10-point lead for Cincinnati. Well, Munchie Lego set this ten athletic. Due to time constraints, we'll now move ahead in our coverage. Bridgewater completes on third down. Did Copeland get the first down? From that spot, yes, forward progress. And a measurement coming. 
I love the way Copeland immediately looked at the official and said, hey, 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 forward progress, move me up. See where the ball is, catches it beyond the yellow line. That ought to be a first down. But after he went down, he immediately looked to the official and said, hey, look, <laughs> point the finger, move me back up. It is a first down inside the 25 for Louisville. This is the first possession of the second half for the Cardinals. Screen complete on the outside. That's Rodgers inside the 10-yard line. Eli Rodgers. Smith with the block. Almost every pass has been a quick pass. This is a bubble screen. Also off the three-step. One, two, three. Put it out there. Good blocking out in front of Rodgers by Andrell Smith. Bridgewater has completed his last nine passes, including six for six on this drive. Teddy Bridgewater back in his rhythm. Perry gets it on first and goal. Nothing doing. Second and goal. Jordan Steph leads the way for the Bearcats. Rolling towards five minutes left in the third. This is the first drive of the second half for Louisville. Play 12 coming. Keep in mind the matchups between the receivers and the corners. Parker goes about 6-3, as does Andrell Smith, facing up against five foot nine inch corners for fade routes down here. Tight coverage on second and goal. Bridgewater will hand off again. It's Perry who is driven back. So running the football on second and goal, making it third and long for Louisville. Yeah, fans don't like it. Fans are booing. With Teddy Bridgewater throwing the ball well in the second half, six of six, they want to see the ball in the air. Now on third down, you got no choice. You got to put it up. This is third and goal from the 13th and now instead of getting the single man to man coverage on the outside they're probably going to get some kind of a zone so the defenders can see the quarterback so no advantage to Louisville right now two for two touchdowns in the red zone for the Cardinals Bridgewater steps up throws complete to the nine so well short of the end zone Perry makes the grab but allows Louisville to bring the kicking unit on on fourth down Bearcats keep Louisville out of the end zone force the field goal attempt in the red zone. Yeah it was the second down play that created that problem that allowed Cincinnati to go third down go into their five six defensive back set and to play zone coverage so that they didn't have to worry about the mismatches they had on the outside. 26 yarder coming from Wallace. His last attempt was 57. So this one looks a whole lot easier and he boots it right through. <laughs> Wallace hits the 26 yarder, but it is Cincinnati still leading by seven. Late third. The Cardinals wearing the number five jersey of Teddy Bridgewater. And the Louisville offense manages to hang on to the football or recover the fumble. The correction, the muff. The muff, yes. As we've, as, we've, as we've discussed in the first half, the difference between a muff and a fumble. Rewind your DVR if you want more discussion. Play action on first and ten. Bridgewater dancing all on the goal line. He's going to heave it long. Laying out to make the grab. Damian Copeland. What a throw by Bridgewater, but Copeland to grab it, a 51-yard game. Copeland made that happen. He turned on the Jets about right here. This ball was a little bit overthrown, but he takes off and goes full stride after it and then lays out. But it was about eight yards of pure speed that got him in position to lay out and get that ball. That's a guy, Damian Copeland, who has been injured throughout his Louisville career. As a junior, he is 100% healthy, and he is making the most of it. A tremendous grab by Copeland to make it first and 10 Cardinals in Cincinnati territory. Wright takes it inside the 35. Well, they caught Cincinnati on a blitz inside around the guard center gap, and they ran just to the outside of it to the right side. Cincinnati gambled, came inside, and didn't hit home with it. Every play, every possession critical in a one-possession game in the fourth quarter. 
Louisville down by a touchdown, but the Cardinals have momentum and positive territory inside the Cincinnati 35. Harry behind Bridgewater and a pistol. On second and two, Harry keeps rolling to move the chain to right around the 31. Mentioned his 2007 comeback. This is the last time that Louisville has won the Keg of Nails game. Brian Brobster with 350 yards, three touchdowns. How about a 51-yard pass to Harry Douglas to set up the game-winning three-yard touchdown run. And now Bridgewater to Copeland on a 51-yarder as Louisville in the fourth tries to come back on Cincinnati. Play fake, Bridgewater to the end zone. Incomplete off the hands of Parker. Bobbling as he went out the back of the end zone. Yeah, well, they got the safeties on the play action and they bit on it. Copeland, I'm sorry, Parker gets behind them. Ball is right on time and perfect, but Parker couldn't catch it cleanly. If he catches that cleanly, that's a touchdown. Perfectly thrown, perfectly timed, but he bobbled it. Did he have possession with the foot inbounds there? I, I, I don't know that he did. The ruling on the field incomplete. Bobble. Wow. Bobble. That'll get reviewed, but he is still trying to tuck it away. Question is, does he tuck it away before he goes out of bounds? In live action, it didn't appear so. So the replay official Steve McBride wants to take a look at this. It is solely his decision as to whether this is a touchdown grab by Devontae Parker. Well, that, that ball is still moving, it looked like, when he actually got to the ground. And once he bobbles and he sort of leaves his feet a little bit and heads to the ground, right now he's got to come back down with that ball. He's got to put it away and have it. This is one of those rules in the book that is so obvious. It says a player gains possession when he secures the ball firmly by holding or controlling it while contacting the ground in bounds. That tells you uh, exactly what we all know. And in college football, of course, only one foot inbound as opposed to two in the pros. And in college, it is the replay official's sole judgment. So this is Steve McBride, the replay official, communicating with the referee, Dennis Hennigan. But it's Steve McBride, the replay official's decision. And here it is. After further review, the receiver had a foot down in the end zone with possession of the ball. Touchdown. Wow. A PAT away from being top. One more look. It was the stab of the ball with two hands before he actually hit the ground that he has to be relying on for that. There was movement with the ball after he hit the ground. I'm still surprised it was overturned, but it was. It's a touchdown, and we are tied at 24 in the fourth. The first passing touchdown for either quarterback tonight. Bridgewater goes 51 yards to Damian Copeland, and then goes 30 on the touchdown pass. How about Parker staying with this at the end, even though he bobbled it, didn't get one of these right here. I got my new phone with trade and save. Woo! <laughs> that radio shack. A timeout prior to third down and five in a tie game 24 all. Benton Shannon, a.k.a. Munchie Lego, the quarterback, Lyle Allen Jones, a.k.a. Butch, the head coach. You need this first down if you're Cincinnati because from right here, you're looking at a very long field goal. A 47, 48 yarder. Lego on third and five to throw. Drops inside the 15. Kelsey had it. It would have been first down Cincinnati with 2.40 to go in the game. Yeah, not a great throw, but certainly catchable. It throws it behind Kelsey. Kelsey couldn't stop enough. On replay, it looks like it was even a more difficult catch because it was thrown further behind him than I thought. So now Three it's time. Miliano on for the kick. This is from 46 into the wind. He had a 47-yard kick in the first quarter. Miliano has made his last four kicks. 
46 into the wind for the lead. Miliano's kick is no good. Tie game, 24 all 235 to go. And now Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville offense will get the football with two timeouts. And two minutes and 35 seconds. Now remember, had Cincinnati slowed down their hurry up offense, they probably could have taken another minute to a minute and a half off the clock. And that would have left Louisville with a lot less time. Charlie Strong, really excited. One of the hottest names in the coaching business right now. Charlie Strong. The game's so good, we haven't even gotten to discuss Charlie Strong's <laughs> thoughts on that. First and 10 from the 29 for Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals complete on the outside. That's Copeland. Teddy Bridgewater led a game tying drive here in the fourth. He had a game winning drive last week versus South Florida in which he was terrific. And we talked about quarterbacks winning quarterbacks winning play fourth quarter third downs. Pressure coming. Throws into that pressure, complete on the outside. Parker slips past the Cincinnati D. Devontae Parker will take it inside the 10. Devontae Parker, touchdown, and Louisville grabs the lead with a minute 56 to go on the fourth. the tying touchdown and now Devontae Parker takes it 64 yards to give Louisville the lead. It's a touchdown lead for the Cardinals as they try to claim the keg of nails for the first time in five years. You remember when defensive back Devin Drain went out with a bad right hand? He came back on the field. Watch how he misses this tackle. He's got that right hand taped up. He can't make that tackle with the right hand right there. Parker gets by him. The pursuit is late. And Parker, all six feet, three of him, with good speed, gets into the end zone. But Devin Drain, trying to be a hero and get back on the field to help his team with the bad wrist, the bad hand, could not make the tackle. Devontae Parker had the 30-yard touchdown grab, the one that was originally incomplete, then reversed to tie the game, and then Bridgewater to Parker on a 64-yard catch and run, breaking away from the injured Devin Drain. Minute 56 now. Cincinnati gets the football back. Two timeouts. Abernathy from the goal line. Abernathy to the 35. Abernathy wrestled down at the 42. Bearcat football needing a touchdown. A minute 48 to go in the game. There are the touchdown grabs by Parker, 30 and 64. Munchy Lego in the Cincinnati offense get the football. Two timeouts. They will have it right around the 40 yard line. Call it the 41. Oh man, the rain is coming down a lot harder now. And this is a tough environment. It's gotten louder for Munchy Lego. First and ten. Caught somehow. Tompkins makes the catch through two defenders diving for the interceptions. Kenbrell Tompkins makes the catch. Uh, how did he get it through there? How did they miss it? And what great concentration by Tompkins. A minute 41. Clock rolling. Cincinnati football at the Louisville 37.
Lego hands off to win. Win takes it to near the 25, close to another first down. Bearcats have two timeouts. Plenty of time. They picked up the blitz that time and got win to cut into the vacated gap there and pick up a first down. They have plenty of time. Chains move. The clock did not stop as the chains were moved. Minute 12, a minute 10. Lego heats it to the end zone. It is caught for a Cincinnati touchdown. Julian hauls it in. We're a PAT away from being tied again with a minute three to go. 27-yard touchdown grab. Lego to Damon Julian. In just 53 seconds, the Bearcats go 59 yards to get the touchdown. Miliano for the extra point to tie. Even at 31 with wow. a minute three to go. Go figure. <laughs> wow. And Munchie Lego answers watch this here here's your safety he's heading back to the corner the corner thinks he's got deep help Monchi lego waits them out julian runs outside the corner and gets deep the safety can't get over in time because Monchi holds him in the middle of the field watch the way he holds everybody inside and then comes back outside quickly before the safety can get over wow Nice throw, great catch. Damon Julian has the two biggest touchdown grabs of the season for Cincinnati. He had the 39-yard game-winning TD versus Virginia Tech and now hauls this one in to tie it with a minute three to go. First touchdown pass of the night for Munchie Lego, and what a time yeah. to rally the Bearcats into the end zone. So now, Louisville football with a minute three to go. Hey, we talked about these two quarterbacks. Munchie Lego said he's better. We talked about critical situations. Munchie Lego just delivered another critical situation like he did against Virginia Tech. We saw Teddy Bridgewater deliver that in the fourth quarter. Both of them have played lights out in this fourth quarter. 325 combined yards between these teams in the fourth quarter. Another bobble on a kick. Perry manages to recover it. Perry gets to the 13. Devontae Barker has the game tying touchdown for Louisville and the game winner. Game yeah, correction. The, the, the one that yeah, got the go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, that was the controversial one that was reversed on replay. This was the missed tackle by Drain with the bad arm and then great speed to get to the end zone. But that would be answered despite what Parker did on those two touchdown catches. Pretty good average, huh? Averaging 30 yards. So now, Louisville first and 10 from the 15. Bridgewater throwing on first and 10, complete to the outside. That's Radcliffe. Well, Cincinnati is playing kind of a zone matchup man. They're showing two deep coverage or quarters coverage, but as the receiver gets close to you, you play man to man principles on them. And Teddy Bridgewater recognized that and threw away from the coverage, beating it. Louisville will try to get to the Cincinnati 30 to set up a field goal attempt for Wallace. Bridgewater rolling. Bridgewater throws incomplete. 43 seconds. Second down coming for Bridgewater. Yeah, and Cincinnati changing their defense. They got out of the defense they were, they were in on first down. They've gone more to a, a serious zone, a two deep, five under rush four, giving them a little bit more protection on the deep ball. In order to get into the kicker, John Wallace's range to get to the 30, 
That's about 25 yards from here for Louisville. So 43 seconds, yep, two timeouts. 25 yards, two timeouts in order to have the shot for the red shirt freshman kicker, John Wallace. Bridgewater takes the sack. Bridgewater is sacked by Cheatham. Back at the 37, Louisville has to use one of the timeouts with 36 seconds left. A well-timed cornerback blitz that Bridgewater didn't see. Cheatham did a nice job of disguising it. He's over here. Look at him. He's looking in, but he's going to take his time, and he waits until Bridgewater looks away, and then he comes with it. By the time that Teddy Bridgewater realizes it's coming, it's too late. Perfectly timed by Cheatham, and he's got great speed. So after that sack, you're looking at almost 35 yards to get into John Wallace's field goal range. So trying to get 35 yards, 36 seconds. This is third down and 16 in a tie game. And oh, by the way, it no is, overtime games it, in uh, yeah. Peg and Ailes. This series, does, this series doesn't know anything about overtime. It, it might. Eight tonight. Bridgewater on third down and 16. Scrambling away from the pressure. Flag is down. Bridgewater throws complete. That's Perry who takes it to the 45. Now we check the flag with 26 seconds. It's Wright who makes the grab. 26 seconds to go. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty, third down. Third down and very long coming, and now Louisville has to think about not handing the football back to Cincinnati with any time on the clock. Well, if you're Cincinnati, you, you use your two timeouts. You want to make sure that you force Louisville to do something on fourth down, to force them to kick the ball or something. Munchie Lego and the Bearcat offense hoping they get the football either at the end of the fourth or in overtime. Clock rolling, 15 seconds, 14 seconds. Bridgewater's going to throw over the middle as a man. That's right. Right is dropped at the 41-yard line. Fourth down coming up, and guess what? I, I, I don't know why Cincinnati didn't use their timeouts immediately after the penalty and then after fourth down to force, force something to happen. But instead, we are tied at 31 at the end of regulation. For the first time in the battle for the keg of nails, we are headed to overtime. While well, we are all created. Munchie Lego leads the tying drive, the last tying drive, and we are even at 31 between Louisville and Cincinnati, headed to overtime here at Rainey, Papa John's okay, Cardinal guys. Stadium. Let's hands, guys. <coughs> we will now proceed to overtime. <coughs> Cincinnati will be your call. The winner of the toss will have the choice of offense, defense, or the end of the field we're going to play. <coughs> We will start on the 25-yard line. If we go to a third overtime and you score a touchdown, you have to go for two points. What's your call, Cincinnati? Tails. Tails. Tails is the call. Heads it is. Louisville has won the toss. You can't defer. Louisville's going to go on defense. You want to play at this end of the field? Put your backs to this goal. You fellas, put your backs to this goal. Cincinnati will be on offense. Let's go, guys. Our referee, Dennis Hinnigan, does a nice job of explaining those overtime rules. Now, since Louisville wins a toss, that means they have the advantage. Think of it like a baseball inning. There's a top half and a bottom half. So mm -hmm. that's why Louisville will know when they get the football whether they need a field goal or a touchdown. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm happy for both these quarterbacks. You know, they both started off a little shaky in the first half. But we talked about judgment, decision, critical plays. Fourth quarter, they both stepped up and got it done. This overtime ought to be pretty exciting because both quarterbacks, Quarterbacks are hot right now. Very hot. 
Teddy Bridgewater and Munchie Lego had a really rough start to the night, including the two interceptions in the first half for Lego. Bridgewater at one point completed 10 straight passes. He has a new career high, 416 passing yards. They both lead drives in the fourth quarter to get us to this point. Overtime for the first time in the battle for the keg of nails between the Cardinals and Bearcats. Bunchy Lego in Cincinnati get first crack. And Cincinnati has been able to run the ball against the run blitzes that Louisville brings. Nearing 200 rushing yards in the game for Cincinnati. Lego hands off to George Wynn, the senior from Michigan. Takes it to the 25, so gets nothing, maybe half a yard on the first play of overtime. Keith Brown leads the Louisville surge. And we've not seen much of Abernathy in the second half, only a couple of touches. Wynn is the bigger back, probably a little bit sturdier, and with the weather being as it is, probably a little safer with the football with the bigger guy in the backfield. Friday night magic in overtime in Louisville. Sports Center follows when we're done with an epic battle for the keg of nails between the Bearcats and Cardinals. Win again. It will be third down for Cincinnati. Third down and eight for the Bearcats on the first possession of overtime. And the football has to be in the hands of Munchie Lego. And the guy who's performed in the fourth quarter has been Kimbrell Tompkins, the wide receiver out to the right. Third down for the Cardinals. For the Bearcats, rather, against the Cardinal D. Third and nine for Cincinnati. Lego pressured by Smith, steps up to the end zone, intercepted! Cardinal ball, all Louisville needs is a field goal, and they take the keg of nails battle in overtime. Terrell Floyd intercepts Lego, third pick tonight, thrown by Munchie Lego. It was a poor throw and a poor decision. We talked about decision-making fourth quarter. He'd made great decisions in the fourth quarter up till now. He forces this one. There is nothing there. He floats this ball up for whatever reason. He didn't appear to see Floyd just sitting there at the goal line. All Louisville needs now is a field goal, but rainy, wet conditions, snapping, holding, kicking the football in wet weather. So can Bridgewater and the Cardinals get in the end zone to end all the doubt? Perry behind Teddy Bridgewater on first and 10 from the 25. Sonoris Perry bounces outside. Perry cuts it back. Gets nearly to the 15. A nine yard pickup by Sonoris Perry. From right here, you're looking at about a 34 yarder, 33 yarder. And off to Perry again. Perry leans and appears to have the first down for Louisville. The only kick that John Wallace has missed this year was the 57-yarder at the end of the first half. Other than that, he is perfect. Devil's advocate just for the moment here. Teddy Bridgewater, would you leave the ball in his hands and have him throw to the, throw to the end zone? Would you leave it for the kicker here or take a chance with it? I think they've decided they're going to run the ball, run the football, and try and kick it and win it. Wallace again, yep. uh, especially with the guy who's been terrific on the season. The only miss from 57. So Perry yep. running the football to try and set up. And don't be surprised if you see Louisville kick on third down because of the wet weather and the fact that if you have a bumbled snap or hold, then you still have fourth down. Interception by Cincinnati in the top of the first overtime. So John Wallace, the Louisville kicker, will likely have a chance to win it unless the Cardinals can get it in the end zone. Oh. 
Wright takes it on second and eight. Takes it to the nine yard line. Now it's a question of where does your kicker want the football? It should be a 26 yarder and on third down. Yeah, and he, he clearly wanted it on this hash mark because they ran to this hash mark for him. This is third down. Third down, yeah. Are they going to keep it here or run it back towards the middle? Losing yardage. Wright loses yardage, bring it back out to, we'll see where the forward progress was stopped, right around the 12. Well, you notice how they kept running to the hash mark. That's clearly where he wanted it. And Butch Jones is going to ice him and use his timeout. But instead of running to the middle of the field, clearly they asked the kicker where he wanted it, and he said left hash. This would be a 30-yard kick for the win from John Wallace. Critical snap from Grant Donovan. Timeout. <laughs> Timeout before the bad snap. Timeout, Cincinnati. Oh. <laughs> Man, is he second guessing that one now? Wow. You choose to ice the kicker and get the bad snap in the rain wow. that Cincinnati was hoping for. He waited until the last second. If he doesn't call the timeout, this whole thing changes. We're going to a second overtime. Wow. Now, the percentages say, by a fraction, icing the kicker gives you the advantage. That's what the percentages say, by a fraction. So by a fraction is really no advantage. So Butch Jones chooses to ice the kicker. The snap from Grant Donovan is high, but it doesn't matter. Timeout granted. Wallace again from 30. No timeouts left for Cincinnati. Donovan the snapper, Stein the holder, Wallace for 30 yards, and the win! Louisville wins it in overtime! An epic Friday night battle for the keg of nails ends with John Wallace's 30-yard kick. And for the first time in five years, the Louisville Cardinals win the keg of nails. 34 to 31, Louisville over Cincinnati. We'll have much more from Louisville on the dramatic overtime win for Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals. They remain undefeated.